The Idris-class frigate is a huge capital ship, set to feature in both Star Citizen and the Squadron 42 single-player experience. With such a large, iconic ship, the possibilities for interesting storytelling and compelling gameplay can really excite the imagination. I'm Farrister, and welcome to The Dry Dock, a new series which will delve deeper into the ships of Star Citizen. This video will explore the background behind the Idris both in and out of game, then take a look at some of the attributes and statistics of the ship before considering how that might all translate into gameplay. There are timestamps in the video description, although if you're a fan of the Idris, you might prefer to watch this one all the way through. And whilst this channel usually focuses on what's currently in-game, necessarily this video will navigate the treacherous space that is speculation territory. Whilst every effort has been made to approach this video accurately, sometimes information is sparse and much is subject to change as time goes along, so please treat the content with a pinch of salt and not as a definitive promise as to what will happen. All of that said, let's dive into the background of the Idris. The Idris was first announced back in June 2013, 10 years ago at time of recording, as the Idris Patrol Corvette. The idea was for a fairly small capital ship that would act as a carrier for a couple of single-seat fighters. As development continued, it was obvious that the flight deck would need to be bigger than the originally planned 140 meters and so the whole ship was expanded around the required size of that flight deck, which ended up growing the Idris to the 242 meter length it is now, and at that point it was redesignated as a frigate. Incidentally, this was the second time the concept had grown, initial work in progress documents stated that the Idris started at 85 meters in length. For CitizenCon 2015, the Morrow Tour gave a first-person walkthrough of some of the areas of the Idris, from the perspective of somebody freshly landed aboard, walking up to the briefing room, and the video is still on YouTube at time of recording. Fast forward to 2020, and the Idris appeared in-game as a threat to players, albeit as a somewhat empty shell as part of the Eckhart chain of missions. The same year, the Idris also featured as a fleet ship in the Idris launch week, forming up as part of the small group of capital ships touring the Stanton system. In 2021, the Xeno Threat event also included the Idris as an adversary for players to deal with, and has returned in subsequent Xeno Threat events. Understandably, the Idris also has a history in the in-game lore too. For those interested, I'd highly recommend watching Astro Historian giving the lowdown in his video, The Story of the Idris Frigate. Long story short, the Idris started development back in 2545, and in a nod to the meta history of the ship, initially as a corvette with limited carrier capability. Aegis Dynamics were charged with designing and developing the ship that would become the Idris class, and as Aegis of the time were more prone to do, massively increased the size of the prototype, and added a big old railgun on for good measure. Successful tests led to the first deployment of the Idris-class frigate in 2551, with the lead ship named after a big battle at Idris IV. Subsequent ships in the class also tend to carry the name of star systems, such as the UES Stanton, focus of the Morrow Tour, and set to play a prominent role in the Squadron 42 campaign. The ships quickly rolled off the production line, entering into a life cycle whereby they were used for a period of time, and then mothballed and scrapped. In 2801, things changed a little, with limited military surplus sales offered to the civilian market, and this eventually led to the development of the Idris P in 2875. The history of it all makes the Idris a 400-year-old design in-game, albeit with subsequent improvements and upgrades, but that makes the Idris a ship that has already stood the test of time by the time players experience it. The Idris has a complicated pricing history. The Idris M was first launched in a limited sale for the full military version for a price of $1,000. 
at the time, that was incredibly expensive, although now is dwarfed by the pricing of some other offerings. Due to the limited nature of this initial sale, there hasn't been a price update for the Idris M, although it has been offered as part of much more expensive ship packs subsequently. The Idris P was first launched at $1,250, slowly rising to a price of $1,500 or $1,300 for new money. The Idris P also appears in a number of more expensive ship packs. And further to these, an Idris K conversion kit first went on sale in 2018, which adds back a spinal mount weapon to the Idris P, albeit with a laser cannon rather than a railgun, as well as swapping out some of the remote turrets for point defence armament and a man turret for missile armament. The conversion kit was sold for $250 new money or $300 store credit. The Idris is described as a frigate, and in the official text on the Star Citizen website, it is explained that a frigate in this context is larger than a traditional corvette, but smaller than a destroyer so the consideration here seems to be one purely of size. The stated purpose, similar to contemporary naval frigates, seems to be patrol, peacekeeping and anti-piracy, and as an escort in a fleet of larger ships. The Idris also seems to have been designed around the flight deck, offering flexible utility for a variety of mission types depending on what flight is loaded aboard. Based on current information, the Idris would have a total length of 242 metres, a total width or beam of 126 metres, and a total height or depth of 46 metres. For context, that's a little longer than the 890 jump currently in-game, which has a length of 210 metres. The Idris is set to have a total mass of 37,459 metric tonnes. As a capital ship, the Idris is expected to house a considerable number of components. It's set to feature a large radar and six medium-sized computers. The Idris is powered by two capital-sized power plants which provide energy to the ship. Cooling is provided by a combination of two large capital-sized coolers and six medium coolers. And the Idris also carries two capital-sized shield generators and 12 medium shield generators for coverage across the ship. By way of manoeuvre support, the Idris is slated to include a capital-sized hydrogen and quantum fuel tank, along with capital-sized quantum and jump drives. In addition, the technical overview lists two capital-sized fuel intakes to feed the fuel requirements for the ship. In terms of propulsion, the technical overview notes that Idris has six main VTOL thrusters, two retro thrusters, and two main thrusters. In game, that seems to be that the outermost engines rotate on a swivel, including the single engine and midships on either side, and the double engine nacelles at the rear. That would leave the two engines at the back in the middle as static engines, or perhaps what is referred to as the main thrusters. These VTOL thrusters seem to support the Idris in having the ability to land planetside. Rotation and translation support is provided by 13 manoeuvring thrusters located around the ship. The primary armament on the Idris M is a size 10 spinal mounted destroyer mass driver cannon, or railgun, manufactured by Klaus and Werner. That weapon can be seen firing during the Xenothreat event and dealing large damage with each volley. There is some conflicting information out there about manned turrets aboard, but it seems as though there are six manned turrets. Five of these will be equipped with two size 5 Klaus and Werner CF-557 Galdarine repeaters. Of these, two seem to be located on the top side flanking the bridge, one at the rear, and two on the underside flanking the Argo hangar. That would leave one more manned turret right at the front of the ship, armed with two size 7 bearing M9A laser cannons. The Idris is then further armed by four remote turrets, all topside, with two at the front and two at the rear. 
These remote turrets look set to be armed with dual size 4 Revenant Gatling guns manufactured by Apocalypse Arms. The Idris is then further armed with a selection of missiles supported by a size 8 Plowshare missile launcher. The default loadout therein would seem to be 10 size 5 Stalker torpedoes, the same that you might find on a Gladiator or Vanguard Harbinger. A lot of space is carved out of the centre line of the Idris lower decks to make room for the large, through deck hangar bay. There is a hangar door at the front and at the rear. The hangar is designed to operate up to three medium sized fighters on the primary flight line in the centre, although judging by some of the internal dimensions and knowing what Star Citizen players are like, it wouldn't be too surprising to see players finding a way to fit far more aboard. The rear of the hangar bay includes a ramp on some of the materials, which could make it possible to load ground vehicles aboard. The Idris also comes equipped with an auxiliary hangar below the main deck, designed to hold a single Argo MPUV. Again, whilst the MPUV might be the design, it's quite conceivable to imagine players loading other small snub ships in this space. The specifications point to a minimum crew of 8, up to a maximum crew of 28 persons aboard. The launch materials refer to the Idris requiring a team of players working together to run the ship. Between the pilot, gunners and pilots for whatever is in the hangar bay, it's easy to imagine that at the very least a handful of players is likely to be required to operate an Idris to the full extent of its capabilities. And for the Squadron 42 campaign, it's conceivable that the Idris may carry a much larger crew of NPC characters to fill out the large space. As a platform within Squadron 42, the Idris is also likely to come equipped with all manner of useful rooms aboard. Aside from the undeniably cool window dressing of the Captain and XO quarters, briefing room and the shooting range, things like the medical bay are likely to be very useful to players. The Idris is also set to include a brig and an armoury. And whilst there are conflicting reports about how much cargo storage is available, perhaps because of the possibility of doubling up some hangar space as cargo storage, included in the design are two cargo lifts to move cargo between the hangar and the cargo bay. As a capital ship, the Idris could have a lot of potential use cases for players. The first could be as a bit of a mobile base for a group of players, and for a long duration, able to fly around and ferry some smaller fighters to do what needs to be done, supported by the quality of life features like the medical bay for mobile respawns. That may be particularly useful when longer distances come into play, and the ability for the Idris to deploy with a squadron with its long range quantum drive might be more useful. It's worth adding here that the Brig and Medical Bay potentially add to this utility, with potential options to sell medical or prisoner transport services. Naturally, with the big railgun, a role as a big hitter for fights against larger targets is also a possibility. The Idris remains relatively well defended by the turrets surrounding the ship, so could be a good platform to stand alone against less organised opposition. Another potential use case could be for transporting high value or particularly volatile cargo in a fairly well defended manner. And finally, the Idris could be used somewhat effectively as an escort for another group of ships, able to deploy the squadron of fighters if required. It's no secret that the Idris is set to feature prominently in the Squadron 42 campaign and looks set to be a fantastic platform to set a story aboard. The various rooms and corridors set the scene for a lot of potential, giving the feeling of being aboard a huge naval ship. But the squadron size of 3 is considerably smaller than that of the Bengal carrier, and so for the player being just one of 3 combat pilots might help with that feeling of being a hero. It's conceivable that the Idris could saddle up to some interesting fleet positions. For a larger fleet incorporating larger ships, the Idris is a natural escort, offering some additional firepower, bolstering the forces with mobile fighters, and benefiting from the protection offered by other escorts in the fleet. 
It might be that this is more evident in NPC capital fleets, like the one that can be seen touring Stanton during Invictor's launch week. But the Idris could also be the centrepiece of a smaller fleet, operating almost as a small carrier. With a few escort ships around, the Idris would offer the amenities aboard to the fleet, as well as the heavy hitting power of the railgun for larger targets. But at the risk of going on for too long, that just about covers this first episode of the Dry Dock. This is the first such video in the series, so your thoughts will be very welcome in the comments section, whether about the Idris, or about whether you would like to see more such videos in the future. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you might like to do that too, as well as hitting the like button if you like heavily narrated slideshows talking about naval hardware. Otherwise, and as always, and I mean it if you got this far, thank you for watching.